When the Allies liberated the concentration camps, they came across scores of war crimes that needed punishing. Inside camps such as Auschwitz and Dachau, thousands of prisoners were suffering from disease, starvation and ultimately the conditions that were upheld by evil guards. But when Bergen-Belsen was liberated, the British discovered a number of female guards, and many around the world were shocked to see how some of these young women had inflicted such evil onto other people. Of the 50,000 guards who served inside of Nazi concentration camps, around 5,000 of them were women, and they were responsible for upholding law and order in the women's camps. Many of these had grown up with the Nazi race laws and sought to serve Hitler in his plan to exterminate certain races from the face of Europe. Many of these became Afsarins, and many were also conscripted into the concentration camp system. But what is the story behind the terrifying female guards of the concentration camps? Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In terms of recruitment, the Nazis targeted female guards from mostly the lower or middle classes. The majority of these women had no relevant experience working in prisons or other similar areas. They came from all walks of life, from hairdressers to women who worked on tram cars, former teachers, nurses and one guard who was even an opera singer. Many women joined the SS retinue because of the financial incentives offered and the fact they could earn more money working as a guard as they were doing in their normal jobs. They responded to adverts in newspapers in which women were asked to display their love for the German Reich and join the SS retinue, a support organisation for women of the SS. As mentioned, others were conscripted and were forced into being guards, and a number of female criminals were also recruited and were offered freedom if they served in the camps. The women were often not treated as fully-fledged SS women, and some believed they were, and many belonged to the Waffen SS, or the SS Helferinnen Corps. In terms of ranks, female guards were mostly known as SS Helferin, or SS Helper Women, and there were different ranks available. The highest was the Chief Senior Overseer, and the second was a Camp Leader, or a Lagerführerin. Next was the Senior Overseer, then a First Guard, Report Leader, Work Recording Leader, Block Leader, and then an Overseer was considered the 11th highest rank. Many women were considered overseers or afsarins. There was a lower rank also known as an arrest Führerinnen, or the arrested overseer for former convicts. Whilst inside the camps, many women were known for having relations with other SS men, which was encouraged, and Himmler told SS men to regard the women as equals. A number of women also had relations with prisoners, and this was frowned upon, and if this had been discovered, then the women were most likely to have lost their jobs, pay, and also found themselves imprisoned, as they broke the race laws. Guards such as Irma Grazer were known for sleeping with SS men, and Wilhelm Dürr, the commandant of the Helmbrecht subcamp, was known for having a relationship with the head female overseer, Hertha Haase Breitmann Schmidt. There was a number of illegal activities committed by many female guards. A number of them were known for murder and killing prisoners through beatings, but one example of corruption was Ilse Koch, who was known as a witch of Buchenwald. She was married to Karl Otto Koch, the commandant of Buchenwald, and was arrested as she was charged with embezzling and stealing millions of Reichmarks from the prisoners and also the Nazi state. This confiscated wealth was supposed to be property of Hitler in the Nazi party, but the pair had huge building projects built at their camp for their own personal gain. Ilse Koch was later convicted of war crimes by the Americans. Ravensbrück concentration camp was known for being an all-female camp, in which 132,000 women passed through the barbed wire fences. It was here where women were sent to learn how to become guards, and they were taught by experienced members of staff, such as Maria Mandel, how to inflict a reign of terror onto the inmates. Ravensbrück did have a number of male guards and members of staff, but over 4,000 female overseers were trained there. The women stayed here before they were sent to other camps. Many of the ones who were trained at Ravensbrück went on to senior positions elsewhere, and many of the women became block overseers who would patrol with their dogs and whips and would oversee the living quarters. Ravensbrück in particular was very tough, and one guard was known as a beast of Ravensbrück for her terrifying treatment. One inmate summed up the treatment there, saying, They didn't shoot the women. We were to die of misery, hunger and exhaustion. When we arrived at Ravensbrück, it was the worst. The first thing I saw was a cart with all the dead piled on it. The arms and legs hanging out and the mouths and eyes wide open. They reduced us to nothing. We didn't feel like we had the value of cattle. You worked and you died. At the end of the Second World War, many women were transferred from workforces in factories in the German labour exchange 
and were then trained as guards. Training also took place at camps such as Auschwitz, Flossenburg, Gross Rosen, Sturthof and Mauthausen. They were sent to these camps to learn from all over Germany, but as the Second World War was coming to an end, a number of these were arrested by the liberators. Those who had only just come into the camps were often treated more leniently by the courts and escaped any severe punishment for crimes, but along with these women were a number of horrific and savage former guards who were known for their great evil. Many of these were sentenced to death at the post-war trials and were executed. When bergen belsen was liberated, the British arrested Irma Grazer, who was known as a beautiful beast, and she would regularly patrol with her dog and encourage her dog to attack prisoners. Grazer was also known for her evil in terms of murdering prisoners with her whip and pistol, and she was also known for having affairs with a number of other guards. They also at Belsen arrested Johanna Borman, who was known as the woman with the dog, or the weasel, and she was considered one of the most hated guards in the concentration camp system. Many of the women who were executed in the Belsen trials were sentenced to death for their murderous antics at not just Belsen, but also Auschwitz. One terrifying female guard was Hermine Braunsteiner, who should probably have been sentenced to death for her murders and crimes of the Holocaust. She never faced execution, despite it being proven that she was a murderer. Braunsteiner was known as a stomping mare, and was known to have beaten many prisoners to death, and also have thrown children onto trucks of the gas chambers by their hair. She was also known for hanging and executing young prisoners, and she once stomped an old prisoner to death with her jackboots. It was said of one whipping that, I watched her administer 25 lashes with a riding crop to a young Russian girl, suspected of having tried sabotage. Her back was full of lashes, but I was not allowed to treat her immediately. She involved herself also in selections, and sent many women and children to their deaths in the gas chambers, and she also whipped a number of women to death. Another woman who worked with Braunsteiner was Gertrude Heiser, and she was in charge of 500 Hungarian and 300 Polish women at Bremen over Heide, and there was a very high death rate there, with many women being beaten regularly, and also many were starved and denied food. She was later sentenced to 15 years imprisonment for her crimes. Emma Zimmer was another guard who worked at Auschwitz, and she was involved in the selections of prisoners to be sent to the gas chambers. It was said that she was very feared, and one former prisoner said, Our supervisor was an old and mean SS woman, called Emma Zimmer. She was vicious and dangerous and frightening us constantly with threats, proclaiming in a sadistic voice, I will report you, and then you will go away, you know where? Just one way up the chimney. We hated her and were scared of her. Following the war, many women were executed for their involvement in the concentration camps and the murder and killing process. At Stutthof, many female guards worked, and a number of these, including Jenny Wanda Barkman, were executed on a huge gallows in Gdansk, in front of a huge crowd. Lots were executed in public, but more were executed inside of prisons such as Hamlin and Landsberg. Those women who were found guilty of murdering or taking part in the selections were usually sentenced to death and killed, and also those who worked at Auschwitz and did this were usually killed too. But after the war and in the following decades, women were still being brought to court, accused of being guards and participants in the killings. After the war, Herta Bota told her story to the world, and she had been imprisoned for a number of years. She was interviewed in 1999, and when asked if she regretted her involvement in the concentration camps, she replied with, What do you mean? I made a mistake, no. The mistake was that it was a concentration camp, but I had to go to it. Otherwise, I would have been put into it myself. That was my mistake. But many of the women who worked inside the concentration camps were as brutal and as savage as their male counterparts. They were known for being murderers, killers and war criminals, and were considered some of the most evil Nazis of the Second World War. Despite a number being conscripted and forced into work, many of the women wished to further Hitler's ideology and wishes for Europe and they were ardent Nazis, who saw their work as fulfilling and also necessary. Still today there are a number of women who are being searched for and looked for, for their involvement in the concentration camps, and still today a number in their 90s are sought after. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.